August 4th, 1962. American actress, singer, and model Marilyn Monroe died in her Los Angeles home at the age of 36. In this episode, we're going to explain the shady story that surrounds Marilyn Monroe's death and show you how she really died. All right, when we said actress, singer, and model, that was selling Marilyn short. Marilyn Monroe was one of the most influential and recognized women of the 20th century. Till this day and age, her name is synonymous with beauty and seduction. So what happened to Marilyn Monroe? Is her untimely death yet another story of a massive star facing a life crisis and unable to cope with it, turned to drugs, and accidentally overdosed? Well, if we look at Wikipedia, then yeah, almost word for word. Look, barbiturates overdose, probable suicide, no one got charged with anything. Classic. All right, seems like an easy case here. Very similar to the cases we have already reviewed, Heath Ledger, Juice World, you name it. Marilyn Monroe was found in her bed, face down, all kinds of drugs were around. Well, 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 apparently it wasn't even her first suicide attempt. Long story short, clearly an overdose and clearly a suicide. Nothing utterly spectacular, ladies and gentlemen. Curtains close. This is how it, wait, 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 wait. Not so fast. There's one, okay, let's call it a theory of Marilyn Monroe's death. One that hadn't been proven with hard evidence, yet one that challenges the conclusions of the official investigation. Buckle up, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. This is Marilyn Monroe singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President to John Fitzgerald Kennedy at his birthday party and fundraising event in Madison Square Garden in May of 1962. Beautiful song. Some three months later, Marilyn will be found dead. Oddly enough, the stories of the most influential woman and the most powerful man of the 60s were connected. She was beautiful and playful, and his extramarital affairs were widely disseminated. Those two were on the collision course since the day they met in 1961. But what started as a brief affair turned into a threat to national security. And it's right at this very moment when we'll welcome another Kennedy to the stage. Robert Kennedy, John's brother. He was the Attorney General of the United States, head of the Department of Justice. You see, JFK was the president. You know, a married man and a father. He had to maintain his public image. There was absolutely nothing that he could offer Marilyn, and she knew that. As things cooled off with John naturally, Marilyn hooked up with Robert. While he was also a high-profile figure, an exemplary husband, and father of seven kids at the time, things were a little less complicated with Robert. And their affair turned into a relationship, a troubled relationship. Robert was a bit uncareful about the information he was sharing with Marilyn. She knew everything, from what he liked for dinner to how the U.S. was going to respond to the nuclear threat in the face of the Soviet Union. And then he said, We're going to see what Khrushchev's next move is going to be, but it's very, very likely that they're going to have to neutralize Fidel Castro. The Secret Service quickly discovered that Marilyn was a chatterbox, as some of the information leaked. Robert was beside himself when he realized that Marilyn was the one to blame. So he made the decision to cut her loose. He started ghosting her, stopped answering her calls, and this is where, allegedly, things went sideways. Marilyn was deeply upset with Robert's rapid change of course. She felt betrayed and depressed. The bugs installed by the CIA inside Marilyn's house in Los Angeles, day after day were recording phone calls between Marilyn and her close friends where she'd open up about her relationship with the Kennedys and her plan for revenge. At some point, she told one of her friends that she had been contemplating a press conference to tell the press all of the truth about the Kennedys. At that point, the issue with Marilyn became a matter of national security, and someone had to do something about it. 
the Kennedys and the state could not afford a scandal of such magnitude. So here's how the situation played out. Now, take this with a grain of salt, since there's only partial evidence that supports this theory. On August 4, 1962, Robert Kennedy was in San Francisco, 380 miles north of Los Angeles, where Marilyn was residing. That's a rock-solid fact, by the way. Robert allegedly flew to LA incognito and met with Marilyn at her house, 12305 Fifth Helena Drive. Kennedy's goal was to get Marilyn's diary and try to come to terms with her. However, Marilyn was not interested in making things easy for Robert. Long story short, she refused to give him the diary. They had a fight and Bobby left the house empty-handed. Marilyn got emotional and started drinking. She then started calling her friends, talking trash about Robert, their relationships, and her retaliation plan. The bugs inside her house captured those conversations. Kennedy got notified of this right away. He and his entourage went back to Marilyn's house. This time, Robert was not fooling around. His whole career, the career of his brother, let alone their reputation, were at stake. Give me the diary, Marilyn. I'm asking you one last time. Where is it? Marilyn refused. At around 10.30 p.m., Robert Kennedy left Marilyn's house and his entourage executed Plan B. Plan B was to kill Marilyn, but make it look like it was an overdose. A group of people neutralized Monroe and injected a large dose of barbiturates into her body, put a bunch of pill bottles next to her bed, and left. Marilyn died shortly after. While this may seem like a bizarre conspiracy theory, it has some solid ground. Check this out. One of the crucial pieces of the accidental overdose story were the multiple bottles of pills discovered next to Marilyn's bed. While the concentration of drugs in Marilyn's blood was indeed extremely high, the autopsies showed that there were no pills in Marilyn's stomach. Did they just get dissolved? Like, all of them? Highly unlikely. The pills simply could not have dissolved that quickly. What is more likely, though, is that someone injected the liquid drugs into Marilyn's body and made everything look like she had taken too many drugs. Also, a few hours before her death, Marilyn called one of her best friends, Jean Carmen, and asked her if she could bring her some drugs since she didn't have any. Jean refused. So how come there was a nightstand full of empty drug bottles next to her? If Marilyn didn't have them shortly before her death, then someone must have brought them. And our favorite one, Robert Kennedy was obviously denying the fact that he had been in LA that night. Remember, he was in San Francisco. But he was recognized by a police officer who stopped his car for speeding. It was that very night. And it was not in San Francisco, it was in LA. If you think about it, San Francisco to LA is a 90 minute flight. We're not saying he was in LA for sure, but he could have been if he really wanted. Whether you believe the conspiracy version or not, Marilyn Monroe's overdose is one of the most mysterious and suspicious celebrity death cases of the 20th century. These were the two versions of Marilyn Monroe's death story. This is how it was. Alright, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss new episodes.